Hi, Second Form Latin people. We are all the way to the end of your book. We're on the very last lesson. Uh, there are actually two more lessons in your workbook. Uh, we're going to kind of combine them, and I'll tell you how we're going to do that shortly. But please get your workbook, um, get your workbook and your student textbook, and a pen or a pencil. Pause the video if you need to and come back to me. And let's go through this. We're not actually going to do any sentence work. We're going to do some sentences out of your workbook today. I'm not going to write them on the whiteboard. But first of all, I want you to turn in your student book to page 78. And on page 78, you will see there that they have conjugated in the passive system one verb from each conjugation for you. Compare those, learn those, we really, really need to learn those well. Okay, you're going to be practicing them in your workbook again this week. Uh, notice at the bottom, they point out to you everywhere there is something irregular. So the barris, you know, bore, barris, bitter, that's irregular. You would expect that to be an I, not an E. They point out to you the present tense. Regaris, see it's got an E there when you would expect it to have an I. But note that in the fourth conjugation, it is not irregular. That's why I think it's easier to learn er, ris, ter, mer, mini, unter, instead of um, learning the vowel with it, and then just learning the ones that are irregular. Okay, so if this is still not easy for you, if doing the passive voice is not yet becoming easier, you recognize them eas more easily, I would say that every day this week you need to conjugate um, one of each type in the present system. All right, won't take you but, but a minute or two. And it pays off big dividends. Doing it over and over again will really, really pay off. On page 79, you also see a vocabulary review for all the vocabulary you've learned in Unit 5. Now, except for the ones you learned last week, um, Arbor, Arboris, Clamor, Clamoris, which were pretty easy, they are all or, oris words. All the rest of them were um, in the um, second conjugation, um, second or second neuter which makes them a little easier to learn. A lot of them were, were, are common words that it's sort of easy to intuitively know what it means. But we need to know those, all right? On page 79, they also point out at the bottom, ablative of agent and ablative of means. Remember, if a living thing is doing the action in a passive voice sentence, we use a or ab. If it's not a living thing that's doing it, he cut the cake with a knife, or no, yeah, that would actually work the same way. The cake was cut with a knife, by means of a knife, then we don't use a or ob. And then they note the third declension gender rules. I didn't actually point this out last week. We remember that the nouns ending in X are usually feminine, Luke's, pox. Uh, but nouns ending in or, oris are usually masculine. And if you look back at last week's lesson, except for arbor, Trees are feminine. All the rest of those were masculine. Also, you might say that some of those have a natural gender rule as well. We have our Latin sayings. A friend is proven in necessity. Iron is sharpened by iron. The city which captured the whole world is captured. Um, repetition is the mother of learning. Um, if there are any others. I thought there was another one that they didn't include here. All right, so we need to uh, we need to learn those. Oh, I'm sorry. He's no, he's known. Yeah. Oh, it is here. No, she to her exochis. He is known by his companions. We need to know not only those, but all the ones that we've learned in the book, really. So keep keep re reviewing those. Um, like I said, nothing, nothing new in this lesson, but in the workbook, both in for this lesson and the final review, there's a lot of sentences in the book. So I think for our practice, we're simply going to get our workbooks out and we're going to work through some of those together because it's more than you probably want to do. 
Uh, on, let's see, I need to turn the page. Uh, page 172 in your workbook, sorry. Let's actually go through the grammar and word study because some of these are, are important. Number one says, give the two voices of Latin verbs. What are the two voices? Active, which is everything you learned up till this um, previous unit, and passive. Active, when the subject is doing it. Passive, when it's being done to the subject, okay? which is actually the answer to number two. In the active voice, the subject performs the action. In the passive voice, the subject receives the action. Now, skip down to number seven and eight. When the action of the passive verb is performed by a person, the construction is called ablative of agent and requires the preposition a or ob. Number eight, when the action of the verb is performed by a thing, the construction is called ablative of means, and the preposition is omitted. No preposition. All right. Now, this week, I want you to do the Unit 5 review. On page 173, you're going to go over vocabulary, actually on the next page as well, you are going to practice conjugating in the active and passive in the present system multiple times. So this, this review ought to be enough to get you good on that, all right? Now, will you please go to page 179? I think this is self-explanatory, but I'm going to go through it with you anyway. Um, oh, by the way, can you Go back a page to page 178, please. At the bottom, notice they're giving you a synopsis. And look at the instructions. Give synopses in the present system passive. They want you to give the passive forms. So let's just do the first one down there. It says the verb is dubito, and they want us to give the first person plural, which is we. So, how do we say we are doubted? Remember, it's passive. Dubita is our stem, dubita, and we need mer. Er, wrist, her, mer. Dubita, mer. That's the answer for the first one. Now, how do we do it in the imperfect, the we form? Dubita, Bomber. Dubita bomber. How about the future? Dubita beamer. Okay, that's what they want you to do. Notice, sometimes there, there's a few of you who have just done, seen first person plural and then done them all first person plural. Notice there's a different person and number for each line. Follow directions carefully. All right, sometimes homeschoolers, I know this because my kids were in this category too, don't pay super close attention to the directions, but please do. Okay, now flip to page 179. Notice they want us to analyze each of these uh, verbs and then translate. Notice it says check correct boxes and translate. So the first one says, I am carried. Let's do the boxes first. Is that first, second, or third person? Well, I is first person. Is it singular or plural? It's singular. Is it active or passive? I am carried. Is it happening to me? Yes, it is. It's passive. And is it present, imperfect, or future? That's what PIF stand for am carried. It's present tense. So we check all the appropriate box. Now we have to write the word for I am carried. We know porto is carry and I am carried, present tense, it's portor. 
Portor. Do you see how to do that? Does that make sense to you? So you just go through, check the boxes, you analyze it. Actually, let's do the second one together. He was being loved. First, second, or third person, he. It's third person. Singular or plural? He is singular. Active or passive? He was being loved. Is it happening to him? Yes, it is. It's happening to the subject, so it's passive. And is it present, imperfect, or future? Well, I see the helping verb was, and to me that screams out imperfect. So now we have to translate it into Latin. He was being loved. Well, love is a mo, so our stem is a ma, and then we need the imperfect, barbarous batter, ama batter, or ama batter, is what we would write on the line below, okay? Now, if you start doing this, first of all, you can watch the video again. You can just fast forward, you know, go to this place in the video and watch it again. Or you can call me and I will be very glad. What I just did, I will sit down and do them all with you if you're having trouble because I, I want you to succeed. I want you to do well on this. Okay, not a problem. I'm just sitting at home anyway, right? So you can give me a call. Give me something to do. All right, but if not, I, I want you to... Uh, Check them after you're done, and if you don't know why one of them is wrong, you definitely need to reach out to me. Now, on page 180, I see a bunch of sentences, and we are going to do the first four of them together, and then we're actually going to go to some of the final review of sentences, and we're going to do some of those together. They might not involve cows. Maybe they will. Okay. Let's look at the first one. Chives vento terebanter. Just so that we're all together, we're on page at the top of page 180 in the workbook. Let's look at the verb first. Terebanter. Terio means frighten. And it's got the bar, baris, batter, bammer, bamini, banter. It's imperfect and passive. Inter, they. They were being frightened, or they were frightened. What could be the they? Well, chives is nominative and it's plural. Citizens. The citizens were being frightened. Then we have vento. It's ventus, wind, and it's in the ablative case. What could that be? It doesn't have an A or ob. It looks to me like an ablative of means. The citizens were being frightened by the wind, by means of the wind, but you don't have to say means of. Okay. Now, the next sentence looks very much the same. Chivisne, chivisne vento terabantur. All right, we already know that terabantur means they were being frightened. And she vases the citizens, and Vinto is the wind. The only different thing is the nay. We need to turn the sentence we just did. The citizens were being frightened by the wind and make it a question. Were the citizens being frightened by the wind? Does that make sense? That's all we have to do. We have to use were the citizens being frightened because we have an imperfect tense verb. Okay. Chives ventis altis terebantur. We've already established that the citizens were being frightened. Now, vento, though, now it's ventis. It's plural. By the winds. The citizens were being frightened by the winds. What kind of winds? Altis. High. High winds. The citizens were frightened by the high winds. Winds, plural. Right, let's do one more of these. Exercitus ab imperatoribus ducitur. Let's look at our verb, ducitur. Duco means lead. And ducit, that tells me we're, we're working in the present tense. The tour tells me it's passive and it's he, she, or it. He, she, or it 
is led. Is there anything that could be the he, she, or it being led? Well, exercitus is nominative. Army. The army is led. Oh, and now I see a or ab with a group of people. Ablative of agent. The army is being led by the generals. All right, so we had an ablative of means and now an ablative of agent. Now, I want you to do the rest of those on your own and check them, but turn in your workbooks with me. Next week, I'm going to have you do the final review, but if you, if you want to move ahead into it this week, that's fine. It's self-explanatory. Final review means seriously final review. They're reviewing the entire book and it's rather long. So it actually might be a good thing if you get the um, Unit 5 review worksheets done to go ahead and work on this because it's, it's just a very comprehensive review of the entire, the entire book. But what I would like us to do is do a few sentences together. Um, let me see. Oh, let's turn to page 187. I think we should definitely do some sentences from page 187. Because the top of the page has a bunch of sentences with the B verb. So we're just going to work our way through maybe the first five of these together. Okay? Two S Magister. Two S Magister. All right. The verb is S. Sum S Est. It's present tense, and S means you. You are. Now, do you remember what two means? Do you remember two, tui, tibi, te, te? If you don't, we need to review it. Two means you. And it's the nominative. We use it when it's the subject. But you is already the subject in the verb. You are. Why would we use to the word you when the you is already in the verb? Do you remember? It's for emphasis. Um, in this case, I'm saying you are a teacher. I'm a rocket scientist, but you are a teacher. I'm pointing out you. Oh, I didn't. I translated the rest of it for you. You are a teacher. We could just leave the two out and say us, s magister, and it would mean you are a teacher, but without the emphasis on the you. Let's look at the next one. Magister te docet. Docio means teach and it's present tense. He, she, or it teaches. What, what could be the he, she, or it? Well, magister is nominative. The teacher teaches te. Remember, tu, tui, tibi, te, te. Te is accusative. The teacher teaches you. Let's look at the next one. Magister knows Dochet. All right, we have the teacher teaches nos. Nos, nostrum, nobis, nos, nobis. Nos is accusative. Us. The teacher teaches us. Right? If you are mm, about that, you don't, not quite sure you remember how to do that, you need to go back in your book and review the lesson in which we learned that. And you need to remember ego me i miki me me tu tu e t b te te nos nostrum nobis nos nobis vos vestrum vobis vos vobis. Okay, you need to know those. Let's look at number four. Non sumus magistri. Okay, I'm sorry. It's nos sumus magistri. Sumus sum s est sumus est sunt. Sumus means we are. What does nos mean? We. Nos is the subject. But we is also the subject because it's in the verb. It's another 
um, emphasis. We are, what are we? Magistri. We are teachers. Now, notice teachers has to be plural because we is plural. Everything's in the nominative case because there, there is no direct object with a be verb. All right, one more. Vos estes magistri. Estes is you all are. What does vos mean? You all. It's another emphasis one. You all are teachers. Do you remember how to do these? Like I said, if you don't, please, please um, review that section. Okay? Now, the, you'll notice there's more sentences at the bottom. There are sentences on page 188. Oh my goodness, are there sentences on page 188? Uh, there are just a lot of sentences. But I want to go all the way to the end, page 191, and let's do the honors sentences. Yes. Ooh. If we can do the honors sentences, we can so do the other ones, okay? Um, yeah, we're going to do all the sentences on page 191, and then we'll see what time it is and if we want to go on, okay? Vidi, audivi, sensi, magistrate iram. Okay, vidi, audivi, sensi. These are three verbs, and they're all the third principal part, aren't they? They're all the third principal part, which means I in the perfect tense. So I saw, I heard, I felt. Now, what do you think we saw, heard, and felt? Let's look for a direct object. Do you see anything there with an accusative ending? Well, iram has an accusative ending. Anger. I saw, I heard, I felt the anger. Now we have one word left. Magistre. Well, that can be nominative plural, but it's not because we don't need a subject. We have a subject. The subject is I. What else can it be? It could be dative. Did the, did the teacher get the anger? Maybe. But what do you think would be better choice? I feel like genitive would be a better choice. The teacher's anger, or the anger of the teacher. I saw, I heard, I felt the anger of the teacher. Not me. I would never be angry. I, I could be angry, but I'm not now. Okay, number two. Hostium pecuniam facile invenimus. Let's start with the verb invenimus. Invenio means find or discover. And we need to remember that the third principal part of invenio is inveni. So it's we found or we discovered. Um, what did we discover? What is our direct object? Money. Pecuniam. Do you see the am ending? We discovered the money. Facile. How did we discover it? We have, a, we have an adjective, but it ends in an e, so it's been turned into an adverb. Easily. We easily discovered the money. Hostium. Hostis, hostis is enemy, and the um is genitive plural of the enemies. Or, we easily discovered the enemy's money. Um, now, notice, invenimus technically could be present tense, but um, because of the accent mark there, we're going to go with perfect. Okay. Number three. Viam dextram munivimus 
et viam sinistram impedivimus. Oh my goodness, we have a compound sentence. It's got an et, and it's got two verbs. So let's take the part before the et, okay? Muni vimus. Munio means uh, fortify. And I see the third principal part, munivi. So it's perfect. It's got the i, isti, it, imus endings. It's perfect. We fortified. What did we fortify? Viam. The road. We fortified the road. Dextrom. Which road? The right road. We fortified the right road and impedivimus. We hindered or obstructed viam sinistrom, the left road. Apparently we're hoping the enemy takes the right road and we fortified it and we blocked off the left road. Okay. Let's tackle number four. It is English into Latin. Okay. I heard. Okay. Here is audio. Heard is perfect tense, so I heard audivi. What did I hear? Waves. Unda is waves. And I need it to be the direct object, and I need it to be plural. Undas. Audivi undas of the sea. Mare. Maris. Maris is the genitive. So, Maris undas audivi and et saw the ships of our country. Now, who, who saw? I. I heard the waves and I saw the ships. So, we need the word for I saw. Well, we have perfect tense again. Video videre vidi. Vidi is the third principal part. So, VD, what did I see? Ships. Ship is novus novus. So, the plural accusative would be noves of our country. Country is patria of the country. Genitive, patriae of our country, Patriae Nostre. And I hope you follow every step of that. Okay, We're, we are doing this whole page. I'm telling you we are doing it. Okay, here we go. Number five, Imperator Civibus Liberis Dixit, Cross Urbem Vestrum Certe Vincham. Okay, let's do everything not in the quotation marks. Dixit, that's our verb. Dico means say. Dico dicere Dixie. Dixie is the third principal part. So it must be one of those perfect tenses. And it's got the i, isti, it ending. Dixit. He, she, or it said. Is there anything that could do the saying? How about imperator, the general? The general said, Chivibus liberis. Okay, ibus is either ablative or dative. What if it were dative? He said to the citizens. What kind of sentence? Citizens? Liberis. Free. The general said to the free citizens. Now let's see what he said. Okay, inside the quotation marks, vincham or vincam is our verb. Vinco means conquer. And am tells me its future. And it's I. I will conquer. What do you think he's conquering? Do we see anything that could be the direct object in the quotation marks? Urbum. I will conquer the city. Vestrom. Your city. I will conquer your city. Cress. When? Tomorrow. I will conquer your city. And we have 
Only one word left, certe. Certus means certain or sure, so certe is certainly. Tomorrow I will certainly conquer your city. That is not a good thing to say. Okay, number six. Viri aram gravem per urbis viam ad forum troxe runt. A lot of words, but we're going to take one at a time. Verb first, troxe runt. Traho means drag. Traho, trahri, traxi, tractus. So traxi is the third principal part. And it's got the i, isti, it, imus, istis, errunt endings. So it's perfect tense. They dragged. They have dragged or just they dragged. What could be the they? Let's look around. And I see viri. Viri has a nominative plural ending. The men. The men dragged. Anything here that has accusative. Well, I see several accusatives. Forum is accusative, but it has odd in front of it. Viam is accusative, but it has pair in front of it. So I'm, I'm guessing those are probably prepositional phrases. But arum is accusative, and it doesn't have anything in front of it. Alter. The men dragged the altar. What kind of altar? Gravem. The heavy altar. The men dragged the heavy altar, per urbis viam. What does per mean? Do you remember? It means through, and it takes the accusative. So through what? Through viam, through the street, or through the road. What are we going to do with urbis? It's tucked there in front of viam, urbs urbis, and it's genitive through the street or through the road of the city. Odd forum. Odd means to or toward. And it also takes the accusative to the forum. So let's put it all together. The men dragged the heavy altar through the city's street to the forum. That's a big one. That's a big one. Okay. Seven, pons novus insulam vestram ad terris gentis nostre yunxit. Start with a verb. Yungo, yungo yungari yunxi means join. We've got the third principal part, and we've got the it is the it endings. So he, she, or it joined, or has joined. What could be the he, she, or it? Well, how about pons? Pons pontus. Pons has to be the subject. The bridge. What kind of bridge? Novus. Pons novus. A new bridge. Okay. A new bridge joined. What did it join? Do we have a direct object at all? Well, insulam is accusative. The island. What kind of island? Vestrom. Your island. A new bridge joined your island, ad terras, to the lands, gentis nostre, genitive, of our tribe. A new bridge joined your island to the lands of our tribe. Number eight, verba dolcia iram turbe vice runt. Let's start with vice runt. Vinco, vincere, vici. Vici is the third principal part of vinco, and it means conquer. And we have the i, isti, it, imus, isis, errant endings. So it's perfect tense. They conquered. Now we need to see if we have anything that could be the they. Well, verba could be they, right? It's verbum, it's neuter, so verba in the plural. Words. Words conquered. Dulcia. What kind of words? Sweet words. Conquered. Now, what did it conquer? Do we have a direct object? Well, iram has an accusative ending. Sweet words conquered the anger. 
and then we only have one word left, turbe. It can be nominative plural, but it can't because we have a subject already. So it's got to be either genitive or dative. I think genitive makes more sense. Of the crowd. Sweet words conquered the anger of the crowd. Now we've got English to Latin. We can do it. Okay. I said, say is deco. I said is perfect tense. So deco, decree, dixie. Dixie. I said to all the sailors. So they, they received what I said. They're the indirect objects of what I said. So we need dative plural. Nautis omnibus. Nautis omnibus. Okay, then now let's do what's in the parentheses. I will give, do is give, and to make it future we use bobis bit, da bo, I will give you, to you, indirect object, vobis, it could be tb, oh no, it can't be because he's speaking to all the sailors, isn't it? We know it's plural, so vobis. I will give to you a new ship. Ship is the direct object. Navis, navis, navi, navem. Navem. And it's a new ship. Well, we know novice means new. But we have to remember what gender ship is. This is handy because ships are often referred to as she in English, and that helps us remember ship is feminine. So it's a navem novam with an A-M. Four more. We can do this. Four more. All right. Number 10. Aram deus sub monte fece runt. All right. Fece runt. Facio facere fecci or fecci. It's make or do. It's the third principal part and it's got the i, isti, it, imus, isis, erunt. So it must be perfect tense. They made. Right? Is there anything that could be the they? You know, there's nothing that could be the they in this sentence. There's nothing that's nominative and plural. So the subject just must be they. They made what? Do we have a direct object? Do we have anything in the accusative case? Oh, Aram. Aram, an altar. They made an altar. Deus. Who got the altar? Who was the altar for? For the gods. Notice it's dative plural for the gods. Sub monte. At the foot of the mountain. We probably aren't going to say under the mountain, although you could, not literally under, you know, but beneath, under, but at the foot of takes away the ambiguity. You don't think anybody's tunneling under the mountain, okay? They made an altar to the gods at the foot of the mountain. Number 11. Saxa gravia sub volum yeke runt. Let's start with yeke runt. Yakio, yakari, yeki, throw. It's the third principal part. And it's got the I, I, C, I endings, so it's they, through. All right. Is there anything that could be the they? Well, Saxa, the rocks, through. Okay, that seems a little odd. You know, Saxa could also be a direct object because it's neuter and it's nominative and accusative are the same. So let's try that out. They threw rocks. Let's go with that. Till, till we discover an error if we've made one. They threw rocks. What kind of rocks? Gravia. Heavy rocks. Subvolum. Now, sub, we just used it before and it was ablative. Sub monte, at the foot of. But this one's subvolum. It's uh, with an accusative. To 
the foot of, or to the bottom of. Volum, the wall. They threw heavy rocks to the bottom of the wall. Remember when it's, uh, usually when a preposition that can go both ways, if it's with the ablative, it means it's just there, it's sitting there, and when it's with the accusative, it means it's moving towards it. So in this case, the rocks are moving towards the wall. Okay, number 10, no, 12. I don't want to go backwards. Okay. Fortunam bonam cupi veramus et multos equos kepe ramus. Okay. Another compound sentence. Okay. Let's take the first half. Cupi veramus. Cupio means desire, want, and cupiv is the third principal part. So it's one of the perfect tenses, and it's got the eram, eras, erat, eramus endings. It's pluperfect. We had desired. What had we desired? Fortunam bonam. Good fortune. We had desired good fortune. Et and Chepe Ramus. Capio capri kepi or chepi. It means capture. Caesar capture. And it's also pluperfect. And we had captured multos equos, many horses. Okay, we've got one more left. This is the last one we're going to do today. You guys have gotten a huge brain workout. I'm hoping this is really helping you. Okay. They had captured the town and given peace to the people. So let's start with they had captured. Copio, coppery, Kepi. And we need had captured. They had. We put Aram, Eras, 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 Eras on the end. Kep, Eras. They had captured the town. Town is the direct object. Do you remember the word for town? Opidum. What is it as a direct object? Opidum, because it's neuter. Okay, Opidum, Kep, Eras and at and we and they had given peace to the people okay they had given All right the word for give is do do dari dedi dedi is the third principal part and to make it pluperfect we have to put errant on the end dead day rant they had given peace Peace is the direct object. Pax, pacis is peace. If I want to put the accusative ending on it and make it the direct object, it is pacem. To the people. Who got the peace? The people. Populus. It needs to be dative, doesn't it? Because they're getting the direct object. They're getting the peace. So, us, e, o. Populo. Wow, that was a Latin workout, big time. Okay, this week, please do all the worksheet pages for the Unit 5 review. And if you finish it, I would urge you to begin the pages for the final review because there are a lot of pages. Gosh, there are 12 pages. We just did page 11. Probably next time we'll do page 12 together and we might do some of the rest of it together too. But please, um, at very least, finish the Unit 5 review and check it. Um, in the best case, you would finish that and you would move on and do at least the first couple of pages of the final review. We have one more lecture left, so I will meet you here next week and we will do some more sentences. We will do some more review, but this is on you. Remember, I can't make you review. Only you can make you review. I can't make you learn this. Only you can make you learn this. So reviewing every day, do Latin every day. And I find that it's better to do it more than once a day. So if you spend 40 minutes on Latin a day, maybe do 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the evening. It brings your brain back to it twice and you get twice the oomph, I think, out of your brain power, your memorizing power. Um, but don't give up now. You've come this far and we're at the, almost at the end of the book. You will be getting a full book 
exam, a final exam, um, but there's you know what's on it. You know what's on it. And only you know best what you know and what you're kind of shaky on and you need to review. So review those things. All right. I will be here next week and we will do some more reviews, some more sentences together. Till then, have a good week. Stay safe and stay well. Bye-bye.